So someone wanted to know about why the tilted optic disc syndrome causes a scotoma, and if that scotoma, scotoma is a refractive scotoma or not. And scotoma means blind spot, and so when you have a normal optic nerve, it inserts into the back of the eye, and that normally makes an oval like this, and the blood vessels come out like this. So this is a normal optic nerve. However, when you have a tilted optic nerve, the insertion of the nerve is at an oblique angle into the eye, and so you might see an oval on its side or some other anomalous configuration. And this often occurs in high myopes because their globe, instead of being a round globe, has a posterior staphyloma, and it's assuming a more like an egg shape. And so this thing back here is called a posterior staphyloma, and that posterior staphyloma is this bulging out in the back and that's what causes the axial myopia because the rays of light are not focusing on the retina it's, it's too long and on and so that posterior staphyloma can be associated with a myopia and a myopic tilted optic nerve can have a crescent around it because of the oblique insertion of the optic nerve into the bulging back of the eye and so one of the reasons that you could have a scotoma here is that your nerve is actually tilted and hypoplastic. So if the nerve is hypoplastic, it actually has less nerve fiber layer, and that produces a real scotoma because you don't have nerve fiber layer as opposed to a refractive scotoma. So the question, however, was refractive scotoma, and what that means is the light is not hitting the retina in the same place throughout the eye. So you have extreme versions of staphylomas like this, where this part of the eye the light is hitting, but that part of the eye, the eye, the light is not hitting the retina. Mm -hmm. And that means this part of the eye is actually more myopic than that part of the eye. Mm -hmm. And so that is what we call a refractive scotoma. Mm -hmm. And if we put the appropriate refraction on here, we can make that scotoma go away. Mm -hmm. So the most common is when we have peripapillary and we just put more minus on the lens and will make the scotoma go away. So in this case, because the blind spot is the optic nerve, you can have a big blind spot from a peripapillary staphyloma. And if you test the person's field, it'll have a blind spot. And if you have a big blind spot, the blind spot will be bigger. But if that big blind spot is a refractive scotoma, you can add more minus onto the lens and make the refractive scotoma go back to normal. And that means it's not really a scotoma, it's just a refractive scotoma. And it works the other way as well, papal edema. If you have big blind spot from papal edema, we might be able to make that big blind spot go away by putting a plus lens, because in that case, the eye is shorter because the peripapular retina is higher. Mm -hmm. So a refractive scotoma can be refracted away, mm -hmm. and a tilted optic disc causes inferior nasal fiber loss from hypoplasia or the staphyloma is inferior nasal and that means it can mimic a superior temporal and if it's both eyes a bitemporal field defect but it will not respect the vertical meridian it will drift across the vertical and so when you have a bitemporal hemianopsia that doesn't respect the vertical meridian from a tilted disc you're going to be looking at the inferior nasal retina for atrophy and staphyloma, and that's how a tilted disc can mimic a bitemporal hemianopsia. Mm.